In our last update, we summarized the concerning situation with Earth's magnetic reversal. If you haven't seen it, click the link found directly below the video. In your memory bank for this one, you'll need to remember that Earth's magnetic field is weakening as the magnetic poles are shifting, faster and faster on both fronts. We're decades into a process that can complete in as little as 80 years, and we implied that this would have significant effects on the weather, among other things. Let's start there. Today we'll be looking at the first mainstream recognition that temperatures could actually fall when the sun goes into its expected grand minimum this century. This has been one of the core cycles we track at this channel, but it has been over a year since we discussed it in terms of Earth's magnetic reversal, and there have been some updates. These scientists say that decreased UV light could actually begin to cause drops in temperature. Now while the trend is possible, the reason they state is likely not accurate. As Earth's magnetic field weakens, we'll be subject to increased UV radiation that would likely offset the drop from the grand minimum. So why would we cool down? Well, let's back up to this irradiance thing that mainstream can't seem to let go. This is what it looked like from the end of summer through fall. The big drop was the major solar flares of September, the largest of 12 years. This specific footage is from our critique video of irradiance usage in climate models. Every time there is a major uptick in solar activity, what we should be looking for, the spectrum measured by this model drops the suggested energy input to Earth, when in fact that energy has vastly increased. The ultraviolet energy might change or go down a bit, but the X-ray energy and ionospheric energizing that degrades radio communications vary by orders of magnitude during those events, and the radio spectrum also does not follow this counterintuitive UV pattern over the short or long term. Orders of magnitude there as well. Then we come to the charged particle flux. Forget electromagnetic waves, these are particles with mass and cascading effects in the atmosphere. They also fluctuate much more than the 0.1% variability that mainstream climate models focus on with irradiance. The real story is much different, especially because long-term tracking does nothing to account for threshold events of space weather. Let's take the example of the 164 degree chicken. Tracked for years, that looks flat and a 30-second stint up at 165 wouldn't look like anything over long periods of time. But what have those 30 seconds done to the chicken? If you can understand that at 165 the chicken became cooked and you've hit a threshold event where a complete change of the system occurs, then you can understand why these space weather events like solar flares and CME impacts are important for keeping our planet warm. It is always trying to go into an ice age, and that nearly constant solar irradiance requires help or else the upper atmosphere begins to drop and the threshold events we need to keep warm suddenly vanish, and over the long term, it looks like nothing has happened in the data at all. There are geomagnetic effects as well, the modulation of the solar energy by the quasi-biennial oscillation, and of course the cosmic rays from the galaxy and beyond. In this official forecast of solar activity for the next climate models, the bottom chart here shows the increase in galactic cosmic rays expected as the sun goes into grand minimum, which is also expected as Earth's weakening magnetosphere allows more of those cosmic rays to enter. We should begin to see a cosmic ray bombardment that outperforms anything in modern history, given that the two are happening together. This is where our recent updates from Princeton and Yale come in. Since Princeton confirmed cloud effects on climate and went a step further, saying they were underestimated in their ability to cool in climate models, it has painted a new picture of cloud formation due to cosmic rays. We'll have weaker solar input that could be balanced by a weaker shield against that energy, but both the Earth's magnetic field and high solar activity block out cosmic rays from the galaxy and beyond, and there's no balance there. Both the coming grand solar minimum and Earth's disappearing shield means more cosmic rays, more clouds, and therefore more of the cooling effect underestimated in the mainstream models. You will also recall that there is a record anomaly of cold fresh water being held captive in an arctic gyre. It's about to be released. Yale says this is like a ticking cold climate bomb and it will have immediate effects on the northern hemisphere. While the magnitude and duration of the coming grand solar minimum, along with the exact timeline of Earth's magnetic reversal, are not certain, there is no mainstream model of solar activity predicting anything but weaker activity upcoming, and most 
predict this grand minimum this century indeed. Decreasing the solar shield against the galaxy at the same time as Earth's shield against the sun and galaxy weakens, we've got cold news above, cold news coming below, and with the sun heading to sleep this century, we've got a combination of Earth and solar changes totally alien to all existing climate models. The universe is a snitch. Just wait for it. And be safe, everyone.